Hello web developers, it's Sean again, and I want to walk you through the Watts 3020 FizzBuzz assignment. Um, this assignment builds on a repository, it's available at the SU Web Development GitHub repo, you can get the link down in the description there, and uh, work along if you want to. Um, in this assignment, we are going to be creating FizzBuzz. So FizzBuzz is a very popular sort of interview challenge. Um, it's based on a children's game that is designed to help ch kids learn math and division specifically. Um, and the rules of FizzBuzz are that if a number is divisible by three, the player says fizz. If the number is divisible by five, the player says buzz. If the number is divisible by both three and five, the player says fizzbuzz. And if none of these conditions are true, the player just says the number. So if you imagine playing this um, with friends, you're gonna say one, two, fizz, three or four, buzz, fizz, seven, eight, fizz, buzz, 11, 12, et cetera. Here's, here's an example of what that output would look like if it was printed to a screen. So you can get the idea about what you're going for there, okay? So the base requirements for this project, we're gonna take input from the user to determine the max number for the FizzBuzz calculation. We're going to use a while loop so that we can reprompt the user if they enter something that's not a number or if they enter a negative number, neither of those things. We're gonna validate using the is safe integer and, um, and then also to make sure, uh, make sure that it's over zero, uh, that the input is suitable um, for, for what we're doing. And if it's not suitable, we wanna keep reprompting them, which is what the while loop is gonna do for us. Uh, then we are going to create code that makes proper use of conditionals. So this means we need to set up the conditional check to figure out whether we say fizz, buzz, fizz buzz, or just repeat the number. And we're gonna generate an array of calculations, meaning either the number or the word fizz or the word buzz, um, and we're gonna do a, use a for loop to do that. And then we're going to output our calculations using a for of loop to build out an, a string of output text that is gonna get inserted into the HTML. So that's that's what we're going to do. And um, if you care to look at the stretch goals, I will leave that to the student. <laughs> and uh, feel free to return there. But, um, but for now, let's start out where we start all of these projects. We're gonna fork it. So I'm going to fork this into my personal repository or into my personal GitHub account so that I have a copy of this entire repository. And then I'm going to clone this down to my local development environment. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go to my uh, console here and say clone. I'm going to then run Sublime Text, which is my preferred editor, but you may use whatever editor you'd like. So here I am in here, and most of the action in this project is happening in the main.js, all of it is. And so, if you open up this file, we can see that uh, what we have here is a few integers that have been initialized. Well, not initialized, but they've been they've been declared, but not initialized with values. And then um, we have a bunch of to-do statements telling us everything that we need to do. And then down here is the little bit of code that actually handles the outputting, and that's not really part of this project, so that's provided for you. Um, you uh, if you if you decide to muck around down here, you're on your own. <laughs> but you could do cool things if you felt like it. So, um, so we can just dive in and start working. Uh, writing these kinds of to-dos is a really good way to approach projects when you're working on them yourself. Uh, just to go through and list out all of the logic that you're going to actually need to create in code. We call this pseudo code a lot. You know, just writing what steps need to happen in order to make a process complete. And uh, doing the pseudo code is actually a really great way to get your head into a project. And in fact, there's still opportunities here for you to pseudo code out a little bit. And I'll show you that um, as I work along. I also want to mention that um, you, you can watch this video um, to get the overview of how to approach the project and everything, but definitely uh, give some of these things a shot uh, without necessarily following the video step by step. It's worthwhile to try to think through some of these things on your own. Uh, this video is your backup, so whenever you get stuck, you're gonna be able to come to this video and get um, information that should get you unstuck. But, uh, but definitely look through this, um, and I'll let you know when I start working on it, that's when really I'm gonna be giving away all the secrets. <laughs> They're not secrets, but you know, uh, taking away all the fun of, of discovering the solution on your own, I should say. Um, so for now, let's just read through the pseudocode here. So we're, first we're gonna initialize a variable 
is integer, and we're going to use that as a control value for a while loop. While loops execute as long as the assertion is true, so we should be able to use a Boolean variable to control the execution of a while loop, and uh, we'll initialize it to false, and then when we have a number that works, we'll switch that to true, and then the while loop should be able to break out. Um, in order to figure out uh, we're going to um, we're going to test is safe integer, but we're actually probably going to need to test a little bit more. So this is a place where you you can we have an opportunity to think through a little additional logic. So we say in order for the um, max number to be uh, uh, legit, <laughs> we need to know one. Uh, it's an integer. Two, it's over zero, right? Because we can't calculate these numbers if it's not over zero. So that's those are the things that we're going to need to check in the while loop, and that's not provided for you already. But hopefully, when you think through the logic, you come, you sort of realize that and we're going to be able to use is safe integer to check if it's an integer. Um, but we, we're going to just use a regular comparison check to see if it's actually over zero. Uh, then inside the while loop. Um, we're going to prompt the user for the value. We're going to check the value, and if it's suitable, we're going to stop the while loop. If not, we're going to let the while loop execute again, and we're just going to ask the user for a, a value again. Um, hopefully, they figure out what they did wrong previously, because um, we're not going to have that great of error reporting. But that's okay. We'll get there in the future. Uh, the next part is to um, create the FB results array and then populate it. So. Uh, we're going to initialize FB results to an empty array. Remember that once a variable has been declared, its type is undefined. Undefined is okay, but it, it doesn't have uh, all the features that we need to add data to it like we would if we were like when we're working with an array. So, so if we set it to an empty array, it, it becomes an array type, but it doesn't contain any values. Um, then we're going to create a for loop that will execute the max number of times. And inside the for loop, we're going to put the logic to calculate fizzbuzz. So this is another place where you're going to have to add that logic. I'm not going to put that in here now. I'm going to do that as I work through it. But I'll let you think about the logic of fizzbuzz. Again, this is a really common interview question. So being able to think through fizzbuzz uh, will be a valuable um, ab ability. You know, it's a valuable exercise to go through for sure. So uh, then we're going to um, uh, prep the output text, and then we're going to use a for of loop to actually generate the output text. And if we look down here, this code is going to insert max number into the heading to say what number we chose. And then it's going to output the output text into the FB text here that we generate into the output uh, uh, container, which is just a, a little pre-container in, uh, in the HTML. So we can see what that HTML looks like here. We have a span that has been given the ID, and that's where the number is going to get inserted. And then we have um, the actual output text container right there, and that's where the output text is going to, to get inserted. So, so let's start working through this. I'm going to start working through, and if you want to work through on your own with very little guidance, then I suggest that you pause the video now and um, begin working, and then hit play whenever you get stuck, and you'll be able to um, watch through my solution. Um, if you want to get a, a sort of 30,000 foot overview, then, then watch this without typing it through, and then go to the computer. And honestly, if you watch it once, you'll get enough of a hint, but you're not going to remember all of the details, so you're still going to have a really good experience of trying to figure out exactly how to put all this logic together. Um, the, the, the easiest way to do it, of course, is to watch it moment by moment and hit pause a whole bunch and then just type in exactly what I type in. Uh, that's, that's uh, you know, not the most valuable way to go about it, but whatever it takes, okay? So, <laughs> um, the first thing we want to do is initialize the is integer variable to false. We've already declared this variable, so we don't need to use var or let or anything like that. We can just say is integer equals false. That's all. The next thing we need to do is create a while loop. And then you notice these other things are inside the while loop that they happen. So I'm going to go ahead and create this while loop. And since I, I have is integer, I'm going to say while this is not an, an integer, because this, this makes sense to me. So hopefully it makes sense to you too. But what I'm saying is while not is integer. So not false is going to be true. That's the way that the Booleans work and the way that not works here. So 
that means that this is going to execute as long as is integer is set to false. But as soon as I set is integer to true, then this while loop is going to cease to execute. It's going to stop at looping when it when is integer becomes true. And that makes sense conceptually because I'm going to ask the question, is this number an integer? And if it's an integer, then I want to stop the loop. Technically, I actually want to check more than just is it an integer because I want to know is it an integer over zero. And you can have integers, you know, negative integers. Um, are fine. These other to-dos happen inside this while loop, so I'm just going to paste them in to this while loop so that I, I have a, a little um, ability to uh, you know see them and work right inside of the while loop that I'm working on. So I, I put my little pseudocode here to know that it's an integer and it's over zero. Those are the things that I have to check, but the first thing I have to do is actually prompt the user for the max number value. And again, you can see that max number has already been defined up or uh, declared up here. So I just have to uh, give it an initial value um, or, or set the value. So we're going to say max number equals prompt. And we're going to prompt um, enter um, a number. And I'm just going to put integer um, a number over 0 must be an integer. So that will give um, the user, and then I'm going to I'm going to give a default value of 20 in there just so that as we're testing we can just hit enter really fast. But um, but that is going to be um, that. So now we need to use a conditional to verify if the max number is a suitable integer. And here's one thing um, that you you're going to need to bring to this is that uh, when you get information from a prompt. Remember, it's always a string. So if you were to do type of on max number at this point in the code, it would tell you that max number is equal to a string. So we actually need to try to convert that into um, an, uh, an integer. So we're going to say um, max number equals parse int max number. And that's going to convert that into an integer. And then we can write our, our conditional check to see if it's a safe integer or if it's something else. And, um, and we, can also, uh, we can also check if it's over 0. So we're going to say um, if uh, number dot is safe integer max number and max number is greater than zero. So this code is, uh, is going to check those two factors. And if that's true, then we want to set is integer equals true. Because that's going to stop the while loop from executing. But if that's not true, then the while loop is just going to execute again. And we're just going to reprompt the user one more time. So um, that is a. Uh, that's that's what we're going to um, get from there. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, so that so we did that that to do right there to tell the while loop to stop looping. Okay, um, so now uh, we need to initialize the fb results variable into an empty array. So to do that, again, we already have fb results declared, so we just have to set it equal to the empty array. Um, then we need to create a for loop that will execute the max number of times. So this is a standard for loop. So for, and I'm just going to say let i equals 1. I'm going to start at 1 because starting at 0 um, is a little weird um, to think about you know, fizzbuzz. We're doing 1 through 20. So I want to I do that. Um, so I'm going to say let i equals 1. And I'm going to say i is less than or equal to max number. And then i plus plus. So, um, and then inside of this for loop, I'm going to uh, put this other to do because that, that really is something that I'm supposed to do inside of that for loop. Um, I'm going to paste it a little prettier. There we go. And so, um, so I'm going to try to uh, store, I'm going to do my logic and then I'm going to store the results in an array called, F, in, in the FB results array. So the logic for fizzbuzz is, fairly straightforward. If it's divisible by 3, I say fizz. If it's divisible by 5, I say buzz. If it's divisible by both 3 and 5, I say fizz buzz. So what I, um, I want to check the most general case first. And so since 
Being divisible by 3 and 5 together is the most general case because that would that encompasses the other two cases that I would want to check, the other two conditions that I would want to check. Then um, then I'm going to uh, uh, start with that one. So I'm going to say if um, I, and I'm going to use the remainder operator, which remember gives me the remainder. So if I remainder 15 equals zero. So, so the point here is that if it's divisible by three and five, then that means that it's going to be divisible by 15. Okay, that's um, some property of math that I don't actually know off the top of my head. But um, if it's divisible by three and five, it's going to be divisible by 15. So the remainder of dividing something by um, something else that it's divisible by is going to be zero, right? We, we're looking for remainders that are zero here to test whether or not it's divisible by this number. So in this case, we want to say FB results, we're going to use the push command in order to push uh, a value onto the end of the array. And this would be fizzbuzz is what we would be pushing there because this is divisible by both three and five. But we could also check, is it divisible by three, and we use the same format, i remainder three, if the remainder of i divided by three is zero, then we know that i is divisible by three. So if i was six, for example, that would be two remainder zero. Or if i was nine, it would be three remainder zero. So, um, so then if that's the case, then we're gonna say fb results dot push fizz, and then Otherwise, if it's divisible by five, ah, <laughs> we're going to FB results dot push buzz. So we have um, we've cap captured all of those cases, but remember the final case. So if none of these is the truth, then we want to just add the number to the list, right? Because it's just, we just say the number. So one, two, fizz, right? That's what we're looking for. So um, so we have the else that will catch all of the other conditions. So this is your basic fizzbuzz logic here. And you can see that uh, that it's not super complicated, but, um, but it is, uh, it does take a little thinking through. So, you know, figuring that out is, is a fun thing. Um, once we complete that for loop, so that's going to calculate it for all of the numbers that we want up to our max number. Once we complete that for loop, we have our FB results uh, values calculated. So then uh, what we can do is start building our output string. So the first thing that we need to do is initialize FB text to equal an empty string because right now it just equals undefined. So we want to switch that up. Um, then we're going to use a for of loop. Uh, now, look, in the stretch goals, it says that you can compress this code. If you want to go for the stretch goals, you can compress this code. And you, don't e you, you could do all of this work sort of at once to generate the results and build the output text. But I felt that in order to get a little bit of practice with a lot of different um, features of JavaScript, in order to work through this in a little more methodical way, it's helpful to do it, to do it this way. So I'm going to say um, let i equals 1 or excuse me, I'm going to say let result of <laughs> um, FB results, because I'm going to use the for of, not the, tr not the standard for loop. And within here, um, I can say FB text equals FB text plus, I'm concatenating here, result. And then I'm going to throw on a little thing for the prettiness of display, and you could accomplish this in a lot of different ways, but I know that backslash in is a new line character and is going to cause um, each of these results to be put on a new line, and so when I insert them into the pre-container, it will show them as a list as opposed to a horizontal list, okay? Um, you could solve this in a, you could be doing a lot of different things with this. You could be using template literals in here uh, to define stuff. Um, you could be doing list items for things, you know, and using template literals to define list items or something. You could do all different sorts of things to build up that HTML text that you want to insert into the page. But, um, but once we have this running, 
or once we have that in there, we now should be basically all complete on our code and we should be able to uh, run it and test it. So let's go ahead and save it. Now normally I would say test the code a little bit as you're developing, but for the sake of brevity here on um, the demonstration, I haven't done that. Um, I'm going to use my trusty Python simple server here and uh, then I'm going to go back here and load up localhost colon 8000 enter a number over zero. Um, I'm just gonna hit okay for 20 and boom, we did it right the first time. Isn't that awesome? Um, so, so there we go. Now, this code is pretty good, um, but it definitely could be improved. For example, you could add um, more error handling in here. You could probably do with a try catch statement. I think we're gonna get probably a pretty nasty bug if we actually don't, if we enter like a word in here. Oh, no, it came back to us there. What if we enter like a 3.14? It converts it to three, so that may might not be the uh, be exact behavior that we want, but we could, um, you know, we could possibly use parse int in a different way, or we could be doing our checks in a different way. But um, but we've got a decent a decent little bit of code here that um, that does calculate fizzbuzz and gets it out to the page. So congratulations on that. Um, you could now uh, go ahead and commit your code and branch it to a GH pages branch and then push that back up to your um, repository and you would be able to have this code executing on the public web. So uh, thanks a lot for joining us for this uh, walkthrough of the FizzBuzz assignment. Uh, I hope you are able to get it all up and working properly and uh, good luck learning JavaScript. Take care everybody, bye-bye.